Hi, I am Richard Abramson. I am in the poetry, intro to poetry for Vane Tech, and I'm a junior. And I'll be discussing O Motherland, Dear Motherland by Shu Ting. This really means a lot to me because ever since I've been in high school and even middle school, I've always wondered about the state and how it affects its people. There are many ways that people think for this country. Everyone loves America. And people will do give their whole life to America. But then there's the communistic state where people will do everything just to get by. Give their lives. They would sell their kids if they had to. They would just forget about their family members if they were taken away by the KGB and barely eat. Go Just go along with their lives. And Oh Motherland, Dear Motherland really speaks to me because it talks about how it's a person's thought process in communistic China from the sound of it, and it just sounds very heartwarming in how one person will devote their whole life to something that they may never see, like the well-being of the whole country, just for that, not even for themselves. They put themselves out of the way, they forget about themselves, and they only think about the country as a whole and the well-being of the country. And that's why I love this, is I've been, thanks to my history teacher in high school, Mr. Black, he talked about China for a long time. Uh, we had a whole class senior year about China and its communistic state and how people just love China no matter what. It was their life, and yeah, so I'll start reading it. So, for my poem, I decided to read it in front of the War Memorial here on Virginia Tech campus because... It shows one's true devotion to their country, giving the ultimate price for their love for a land that they were born in or even raised up in. And I felt like it was appropriate for this poem because people will give their all for their country and it means the ultimate sacrifice. So, here we go. I am the old broken wheelchair beside your river that has composed a centuries old song of weariness. I'm the smoke smudged miner's lamp on your forehead lights your snail-like crawl through the cave of history. I'm the withered rice ear, the washed-out roadbed, the barge mired in the silk shoal, as the tow rope cuts deeply into your shoulder the motherland. I am poverty. I am sorrow. I am bitterly painful hope of your generations. I'm the flowers strewn from Aspara's flowering sleeves, and for thousands of years still have not reached earth, O motherland. I'm your untarnished ideal, just broken away from the cobweb of myths. My bud of the ancient lotus blanketed under your snow. I'm your smiling dipple, wet with tears. The newly drawn limelight starting line. And the scarlet dawn emerging with long shimmering rays. O oh, motherland. I am numbered among your billions. The sum of your nine million square kilometers. You, with the scar blemished breast, have nurtured me. Me, the confused, the pondered, the seething so that from my body of flesh and blood you might eke out your prosperity, your glory, and your freedom of a motherland, my dear motherland. So, after reading the poem, I looked at it and I realized that it really puts influence on the word O oh, motherland after every paragraph. I guess that paints a picture of the, per the poet devoting what they just said to their country and what they thought how they're devoting themselves and their thought process to the country as well. It is after every line, or every paragraph, and at the very end they em emphasize my dear motherland as it's something close to them and how they love it. Second thing I met, saw was that they mentioned the country size and the number of people and how they're just one of that thing that makes the country so great. They put emphasis on how they are, I'm numbered among your billions, the sum of your nine million square kilometers. So it shows that they are just a very minute part of the country, yet they feel like they are of how they are affected by the country and how they love it. And then finally, the biggest thing that stood out to me was how they talk about all these small objects in the country and how they're broken down and yet they are part of that. That's who they are. Yet they also mentioned Scarlet Dawn as if there's a new future on the horizon that they are helping out to bring with the very little that they can do with their broken tools that maybe their world leaders pass by every day. 
And those are the three main aesthetics I could find with imagery and uh, sound that I could actually find out in the poem. Hope you enjoyed this.